most of us don't give much thought to um, what your rights are. And one of the biggest reasons why most of us don't look into what our, our rights are is because it's like society is already, like if you bought a house and it's already furnished, and since that's been what you're used to for so long, you don't think that you have the right to furnish the house that you live in, so to speak, since that's what's been going on for generation after generation. It's just like you, you used to, you're being born. When you're born, the house that you move into already got furniture in it, right? And as long as you're living in that house, you ain't really put anything into the furniture. You just knew it was there, you sat on it, you used it. You didn't complain about it, but that furniture in the house is not a law. That's say the policy or to the taste of the homeowners or people that's in that house, but that's not anything that's etched in stone, right? But if you inside that person's house or you have to be or you negotiate to be, then you abide by the rules of the house. So you lose some of your rights <clears throat> when you agree or come to terms with a person about something it is, right? You agree to that. That's that's a person's domicile, their area, and they're saying, um, before you come in my house, you need to take off your shoes. It's, it's not law, but it's an agreeable. It's not much to ask. And that person's policy is to protect that person's homeless carpet, right? It's not, oh, you can wear your, your shoes, but um, I'm going to charge you money to wear shoes in my house because that's a policy then that that's made for profit. It's not made with advancing humanity or doing something that that's cutting out uh, an actual danger to, as a point to where you have to make this law because... Without it, society is at risk. And you can 100% absolutely prove that 10 out of 10 times. <clears throat> That's pretty much what science would be. You can get the same result every time. Like order, like with the word of the creator. If you did it, if you kept the word, and this is where the belief system, which I say I don't believe in it. If you did everything that was called to do, and then your life was in shambles, then you can say like, oh, well, I don't believe in God. Most people just start at the end because this miracle didn't happen in their life. They crashed, put their hands together and asked for some shit. And then um, I call the word or the law, the handbook, the guidelines, the specific guidelines that you got to abide by to open up certain rooms, certain doors, channels. But we as a people in all our magnitude and intelligence, we just think we're going to die right in there. Oh, it ain't work. And you didn't apply one of the principles. And we talk about that stuff from the way you eat to holidays, idolatry. And people really think it don't count because in their mind and their policy, that's what it is. But unfortunately, the word of the creator for them, it's not your own personal house. So you can't put a policy on it to say Jesus is more important because it's Jesus' house, or Muhammad's more important because it's Muhammad's house, or your rabbi, your pastor, it's none of y'all houses. It's a it's a community area where monotheism, monotheism or the agreements on this one order is supposed to bring everybody who supposedly keep the word of God together. This same group of people, all these different branches of religion, you can see them coming together for holidays that men themselves deem, because man wrote the, the word of God, right? Apparently this is one of the, um, the, the negatives about the scriptures, so-called man wrote it. <clears throat> but every document that we read, somebody like me or you, which is considered a man wrote it, it's just about what you choosing to put your energy into and choosing to use the book that that I keep I live by 
It's not a book to tell me how to get the most money, the most bitches, how to defeat my enemy, anything. It's telling me how to defeat me. And in turn, I shouldn't have any enemies. It's, and it's really that simple, be it disease. And people won't like me. I'm not for everybody to like. And I don't like people too. All of us are like that. But me keeping this long, keeping this Torah, my dislike of somebody or disagreement with them don't cause me to go to war with them, even want the worst for them, pursue them, say their life is shit, anything like that. <clears throat> I can come here and in a public space, this YouTube platform, with my rights, my God protected rights, First Amendment written down, protected, documented, and say, I don't like homosexuals on a whole, right? I can say that. That's my view, and this is a public place, and I keep, I reserve all God-given rights. I didn't say in order to participate or to be a part of YouTube, which is <clears throat> a public platform where you supposed to have the right, or well, your content is your content, right? So it's a channel. It's not me outside walking up to people in particular with my view on homosexuality. What this is is a free space and a place that anybody can come and exercise their <clears throat> freedom to move about. Where I am is the section where I am. And if you walk through a town that I run the town, you can't come through the town and want my town to not to exist because you don't agree with the way I live in my town. Um, you're taught that, that it's already furnished, there's no way around it. And that takes some of your God given rights away to where I do have a right to not like homosexuals. The KKK has a right not to like blacks. You, they don't have to give up their right or their arms get twisted or duped in the if you want to be a part of this, then you have to go along with that. People don't get it. It doesn't matter that they don't like blacks or they don't like Asians. They don't like Chinese. The emotional part of that can't get in the way of it's this person's right to express that. It's not that person's right to chase down an individual and assault them with verbiage saying, fuck homosexuals, fuck blacks, I hate niggas. And a wide platform like this, they can say it. If you don't want to hear it, you don't like that energy, you free to move about. Nobody's making you stay there oppressing you. It's not, not like an assembly that you are forced to see or like in school where your educational system already has predetermined what's best for you to know in the world. More furniture. If you challenge them on the furniture, <clears throat> not that you couldn't possibly have a better eye for furniture, the name could upgrade. It's just tradition alone. It's been like this. This is how it's going to be. There's no way it can change. And I'm like, you you talking like you the creator. What the creator said can't change. What man says changes every day. Or whenever it suits the financial situation or the control mechanism, they'll change it. We've seen it. And this is why they guide you away from God-given rights or your ability to believe that you equal to every man on this planet at all times, at all times. And if they can get you to believe that the amount of homes, money, material things that you possess, the greater the man or woman you are, then they'll have you chasing that greatness. It's on the dial in God we trust. We don't have graven images. We don't have material things that are supposed to validate us. And for the umpteenth time, I'm a man. Like, most men, women, your house don't run. Your, your gas and electric, all of that run off of finances. I get it. But the part that most people don't get is the balance. It's not about the money at all. It's about a life that you would be happy in. You not covered in your neighbor's lifestyle. Anything that might be flash to get you to lust for, to get you out of order, and you chase. And even if you catch it, it's still a chase. It's not a, it's not a spot to where you sitting there and you enjoying it. You don't have to be moving 
and life is enjoyable. Most people only enjoy life because they under the masquerade of movement and all this oddball shit is happiness. The reason that you're moving around and showing so much is because you're not happy. It's about rich and wealth. The, the difference between being wealthy and being rich is wealthy people not concerned about your opinion on them. And most people that are uh, really extremely wealthy, they're not that to show you that they're that. They're there trying to secure, secure happiness or secure life. The problem happens when they Frankenstein it and it's out of balance and they get possessed with just creating that wealth and forget why they were so dedicated to the wealth in the first place. But still, you won't see these ultra-wealthy people flashing money, flashing houses, cars, and they have more than enough. But people that's, that's not so much wealthy, they want you to know that they have it. They're they going to give give it to you every chance they get. And that's, that's the worship. That's the idolatry. That's where you have an other gods before our creator, right? Taking a sip. I want to shout out my sister Tina. What's up, sis? I appreciate the text yesterday. Thank you. And y'all be surprised how much y'all inspire me. It, it, it's the same. Because they're here. And I appreciate your candor, your honesty. That's what we need, sis. And, and we don't have to be ashamed. She wrote, it was a beautiful text. Speaking about her, looking at herself, reflecting on herself, realizing like the piece of shit that she was basically saying. And it's not easy to, to say that and, and be convicted of it. People will say a whole bunch of stuff, but it's different when you're dealing with the truth. So I appreciate y'all when y'all contact me outside of this platform. And that's why I'm comfortable with the amount of views that I got because the people that come here, it's, it means something. It's about changing shit. You know, she spoke about, I guess, the health situation and where she's been at. And I can I cannot even, you know, text look different, but I can hear it in, in the text about work like i'm quite sure she's already started on some kind of mobility situation her and shout out to the brother d her husband this brother actually saw me first i guess and put t down with with um my channel what kind of what kind of security is that like a man put his wife down with a channel and don't have a problem with his wife tuning in every day because the world says, oh, men and women can't be those kind of friends. Or I consider my sister without it being something else. And we on the internet. Like, we'll never probably meet each other in person, but still some people would act in a way, you know, so shout out to D&T. This is, this is Torah. This is the creator presenting himself to me and y'all. You know, I see, I see a lot of things, a lot of doubts I have about a lot of this stuff, and then Shout out to Rel. He texted me yesterday. I got it late. Shout out to Nephew. But I was out with Munch. And we went to a jazz. Sorry, y'all. I'm all over the place. But y'all know how I get down. We went to a jazz festival out Columbia. Um, attempted to go to one. I, I didn't necessarily want to go, right? Columbia, Maryland is a... Um, it was created with racial harmony in mind. So I, back when I was under a different mind state, I was like, yeah, I like going to Columbia because black and white people were mixing and mingling. The Rouse Company, you know, I think they, they were behind that. And this was in Columbia, which is Howard County, one of the richest counties in America. And I've been to things in Columbia. Traffic is, parking is an issue. You gotta find a place to park and walk. And it's still cool because in Columbia, the crime rate is. So we ended up going to Columbia Mall, a mall, a huge mall. The, the park and walk across this little beltway to get to where the um, festival was being held. So 
we getting out the car, we parking in Columbia Mall parking lot, and then a green vest comes up to us and like, hey guys, uh, are you here for the jazz festival? I'm like, yep. And mind you, are already apprehensive about going, but Munch wanted to go, and I like for Munch to, to be happy. I like for Munch to live, so it don't matter some days I may not be feeling into going that could change when i get there and that could have been the best thing ever and that's another thing about growth too like it's not just i don't feel like it because it wasn't any real reason i didn't have anything but i just felt like we shouldn't go and we went and then we i'm at the uh the green vest all right so i'm already on my shit and y'all know back and forth that's easy for me like to go back and forth to get smart with somebody is easy now this is not a police y'all know i don't have a problem with the police making them establish some kind of jurisdiction of why the authority now i'm at a mall a public place again he's like technically you guys can't park here then he starts going into the stick about where parking was at and i'm looking at him like that and he's halfway in. I was like, don't worry about it. Because I'm leaving, like, I know everything pertaining to where we are. It's small. It's a public place. And I don't even have to talk to you. You're a strange person. Nobody complained that I was doing a crime. Parking in Columbia Mall. Like, now they got a policy because the jazz festival was there. A mall that usually nobody's out with vests on talking about anything just a regular mall but now since financially the situations was going to change for for whoever the rouse company the people in columbia now john q public which is me you and other people gotta go through what's so nice oh yeah it's a it's a place as nice as close as like maybe two minutes from here trying to sales pitch me out of the rights that i have and I'm not negotiating a good time with some instructions. I mean, I went out to enjoy myself, not to have to hear a lecture about a parking space, right? Mind you, and I don't pay taxes, driver's license, and this is some regular guy. He don't even know who he... I could have parked there if I wanted to, and it would have been nothing he could do about it, you know? And a couple ways, and if anybody that's interested... I went home, we left. I I left a battle there because it it wasn't his battle. He had a job, right? And his ignorance of what law is and his arrogance is, is that's a bad combination. And one day it's gonna it's gonna catch up to him. But it wasn't for me to to go that way. And I would have been in my right to stand there and ask him to show me the law. Like, what person, what human being said that I did something to him? Parking in a public space. Who got offended? Which which actual crime and law am I breaking for being here? And I don't even feel like that to, to go to a jazz festival. It wasn't worth that energy when I could just take myself much and leave and still have a great day. So... That's a part of this journey in Torah, not just being able to bully or move people and say shit because I'm in my right. I don't always have to flex that way. And for me, war is where I am, especially knowing I have a right to go to war. So the humility is to the creator, not to that dickhead, bastard, son of a bitch that had the, the security guard shit on. You know, he a dumb fuck. He don't he don't know shit. He was a robot. And he was a Caucasian, mind you. So it, it pretty much don't make a difference whether you're black sheep, white sheep, you sheep. And this was one. And I couldn't uncock on him because he he didn't know. He didn't know. But I knew. So now I'm responsible. Because I know, so I didn't go crazy on his dumb ass. And I wanted to. But winning that argument 
that ruined the whole reason for me to go out. Like, I got to fight this motherfucker to listen to jazz music. And I'm like, nah, you don't. The creator's talking to you. Just go home. Just go home. Keep your peace. Go home. And that's what I did. So some fights now I avoid for, because <clears throat> for what? It wouldn't have. It would have been ego, me just winning the fight. The win will see you later. I don't know that dude, he don't know me. And now they remain a beautiful day. Shout out to my man, Bert. Sat on park ice for about two and a half hours yesterday. Where I used to live at talking to my, my favorite DJ, DJ Bert Mellow Man Inc on IG. And Bert, um, when I first went in the skating world, Bert welcomed me, all the music he put me down with. He used to do Kalen's birthday parties. He was like basically a member of our family as far as we was concerned, you know. Still still close, you know, just with what I've been through the last, since 2016. Bert being in the whole skating genre, I cut all of that off. And Bert was a part of that too. And it wasn't personal with Bert, but he just came with that. And once you get yourself established where you are, you can revisit people who was cool, you know, because you found it in where you are, and there's not the chance of being pulled back over, you know, so. And he was, he was always a sound young man. You can tell that um, he was raised with his dad, and he got a son, his son too. He, he dope, shout out to Lil O. And I always used to give Bert props about the kind of dad he was with his son. I don't think he really got me back then. And he probably almost 20, 20 something years younger than me, like at least, um, I think he's 36, something like that. But I've since had to know Bert for over 10 years at least, longer than that, right? I started skating, wow, it's been a minute, maybe 2009, maybe 2009, maybe. But yeah, shout out to Bert. Oh, we we spoke with them for a while and got got a chance to um, say a lot of stuff. It was interesting conversation. Shout out to my man Cal. I think his name Fred Frederick. I'm not sure, but I don't want to mess the brother name up. Good brother. I used to see him skating. I think he was from D.C. He's part of the um, Dream Team skate team, and a lot of those brothers I didn't necessarily gel with. Um, and that was a time when I was different, like animosity. And, you, and knowing you don't have to like everybody, but you don't have to hold it. When you see people that you don't necessarily like, for whatever the energy is, because it's going to be natural, you don't have to channel or focus it on or give them like, it's just, it's gay. It's gay. Especially for a man, men are warriors. So why are we declaring a, a woman's way of war? Like with, with this and imposter and, and it's okay not to like dudes, but you don't have a reason to actually take this brother to war. You'll create one, nitpicking man, like, like women. And, and a lot of that's because of, we were raised by by single moms and dad wasn't around enough in that capacity anyway. This is why Bert is, is shout out to Bert, his dad. And oh, shout out to, to Frederick, shout out to Cal, like I'm which, not sure what your name is bro, but the biggest respect to him again, I'm getting back to their group dream team. There was a bunch of the brothers in there that I guess where they are in their life, with where they was, it was just like myself. So I can't blame them for how I felt, how to, one of those things, it, it really don't matter, I'm just making a point of, <clears throat> he was one of the people in, in that group that I thought was pretty cool, a decent dream team, skate group, and um, him, very pretty cool brothers, and there were some decent people in the skating world, all of them wasn't dicks or fucks, and at the time, I didn't think that I was one of those dicks or fucks, but when I got pushed out or when I got sick and looked back and I'm looking at my behavior as well as everything going on in there. And I was one of the guys, one of those same fuck ass niggas 
I'm quite sure people felt the same way about me that I felt about them. And that's cool. I deserved it because that's where I was. But when I was dead, for the life of me, it's, it's him, it's him, it's him, it's him. And everybody got their truth, right? It didn't matter that it was a lie. And that's what the word of God or law of God or the religion of God is supposed to take care of or regulate. When you have one base set of rules and commandments that everybody can follow, you can see who's painting, drawing, or running outside the lines. In our society, money or popularity will allow certain people, groups, to run outside the line and establish that as the house that's always furnished, and that's just the way it is, and will never establish anything concrete to say or show you why it's beneficial to all involved. If there's something going on and it benefits only one, one person, and that one person didn't openly agree on it, that's um, a deception, a slavery, deceit, coercion. And I mean, shout out to YouTube. I reserve every right that God gave me, right? I never agreed, never sat down with anybody in YouTube to say, to sit on your platform, I won't say this word, I won't say that word, or this anything. You can't ask a person to do that, to participate in your platform. That is coercion, a strong arm in somebody to do your bidding. And I reserve every right that God gave me. Now, YouTube wouldn't be able to operate under those terms. They can't tell anybody what to say how to say it or who to address what youtube power is is to even participate on the platform or not to they're not the speech police your government can't tell you what to say and what not to say and they are supposed to be the governors of the rights that god gave you not the creators of anybody's right the bestowers of the rights upon you they don't get the remix the rights that God gave you. So when I tell people I master myself and when I make statements like this, I want y'all to hear it and don't get amazed by the terms and don't be spooky or spooked out or get scared. But when I tell you I am a lawyer, I am because the law applies to human people. Everything about my rights that I need to know, I know. Some people say, well, you think you know everything. No, I don't. I don't need to know everything. Everything that I need to know that pertains to me, I know. Everything God given to me, I know. Because that's the only way I don't lose my God given rights. So when I say I reserve all rights, that's my right to express how I feel about everything. I'm not giving that up to participate on a YouTube platform and they can't ask me to. That would be discrimination civilly, right? And YouTube can be held liable for that. When I play the music that I purchased, YouTube can't tell me I can't play that music because a copyright claim, that's a goddamn lie. I never claimed that I own that music and I never said that I was using it to make money. See, they play with terms and they're deceitful, but I know what I need to know. And I know that I'm not using Bismarcky's song as my own song, selling it, repackaging it as Ev Marquis and getting money from it. It's playing in the background because I have the right to play it. This is my voice, my content. This is just a stage that YouTube built. You know, you don't sue the stage for the speaker on the stage. It's ridiculous. All of us, you see with, with gun laws, like they're trying to sue the gun manufacturer now because they're killing people with certain guns. So 
to, to put it in a proper perspective, to have equity, if, if that's the law, if it's the law, then it's the law. It goes for everything. It can't be a policy that's specific on one thing. So if you're going to charge the manufacturer for the gun that got used to murder somebody, then the clothes, the jacket, the jeans, the sneakers, the hat, Nike got to be charged, Adidas got to be charged, uh, whatever name brand that they were wearing at the time that they executed somebody, we got to ban that brand. It's got to be stopped. Now, you might sit around, and it could be funny, it might be funny, but I'm not laughing about it. I mean, like, those are the terms you have to offer these people so the ridiculousness stops. They speak about hate crimes. Apply the same logic. Clearly, the Texas shooter was transgender, lesbian, LGBTQ, I, whatever initial you fucking weirdos choose for yourself. Apparently, that guy was that. And he shot up a place where it was nothing but heterosexuals. Role reverse that, and a straight person shoot up a school where there's nothing but heterosexuals. The glaring headlines in the news is hate crime. Well, if those are the parameters for hate crimes, the LGBTQ, I got a lot to answer for because y'all just committed a hate crime against my heterosexual community. I don't see any heterosexual groups standing up on behalf of heterosexuals. What the fuck is that about? Where are the straight people in outrage in the streets burning rainbow flags? Where are you? Oh, society don't push that because, because what, emotionally it don't fit? The creator gives equity. The words of our creator don't have any, any provisions for blacks, gays, Jews, women, men. It's, it's no provisions for you. Human beings are charged with or to all of you, no matter what language you speak, what you want to say, what you tell yourself, whatever kind of perversion that you love, it doesn't matter. It's one order that all of us are accountable for. You can eat how you want. You can have sex with a man or woman if you want. Right? That's Nobody's saying that they're going to stop you from doing it. But what I am saying is it's an order that you're supposed to live by. Whether you live by it or not, it don't take away that that's an order. That you cannot get around a man and a woman in conception. You can sleep with a man all you want and tell yourself some sick shit all you want, but outside of a man and a woman, life don't go on, right? I'm gonna keep you there. You can dance your emotions and wear your pink panties, it's fine. But don't lie about it. Understand what, what you're going into and be accountable for it. Be good with all the fire that come your way from what you choose. Don't ask the heat to get turned down like I welcome it. I'm standing on this and if I have to burn because that's what I believe in, then, then do that. Don't, don't try to dumb society down to suit and appease you and then think you looked upon differently because you black or you transgender gay. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody's up with plans or the demise for, for blacks or transgenders. You make personal choices in your life that you're going to pay for, whether you're black or transgender. Because outside the order of the creator, be it your dietary law, not eating right, um, lying, gossiping, you get charged with that. You can't hide behind your blackness. The creator won't judge your blackness. He won't judge anything but your actions against him. Transgenders, gays, lesbians, weirdos, queerdos. You have direct orders, Leviticus, sexualities, what to do and not to do. Do what you want, but I'm not going to act like it's not there. And then when y'all have hardships in your lives as a part of being out of order with that, don't bitch and complain and say it's because you transgender. That's not why things like that happen to blacks, whites, anybody. Y'all cannot believe in... A lot to create all you want. You don't need to. But that calamity in your life is real. And if you don't want to match that calamity up with the foot of Allah in your ass, then that's on you. But it's going to keep reoccurring. 
and you're going to be baffled by it because you refuse to think that that God will fuck you up. <laughs> Y'all under the, the assumption that it's some kumbaya, my Lord shit. When the Lord kumbaya, it's, it's on some correction shit. Why would he need to come here on some righteousness? That's on you. It's on me. We choose to do good to the point where you create a jail for punishment first. Y'all don't have no building. No building for a do-gooder. This guy been doing good for 25 years. We gonna reward him with a, what? What kind of stay? It ain't there. Society don't offer any reward for the excellent. You believe in the evil. Atheists. Atheism. Uh, ignorant ones that falsely say they don't believe in, in God. I got a passage for y'all. And y'all smart. In Isaiah 45 and 7, to see I create the light, I create the darkness, the good and the evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Atheists, y'all believe in evil. I heard y'all say it. This God y'all don't believe in said he created the evil. I don't believe in that book altogether. Evil is outside of the righteousness of God. Evil don't exist without God, without the creator. Otherwise... What is the law? <laughs> it's one place that establishes order, whether you fucking like it or not. You won't find etched in stone laws and punishments. Book of Common don't have punishments. Universal law, I don't think they use that in the courthouse when you go in there. It ain't no universal law book you swear to tell the whole truth or nothing but the truth on. Or it's not a comma magazine that you kind of the morality that you swear to tell the truth on is based on the laws of the invisible God that atheists don't believe in. And without that invisible God, this land is up for grabs. There's no way to say I can't cross you. The Christianity, they indulge to where the rulers can benefit off it. They under the premise or color of law versus the letter of the law, drive versus travel, perception versus reality. When you believe something, you manifest it. It's all kinds of orders in here not to commit idolatry, not to manifest images, graven images, cover it. It's telling you all these things to keep it internal. Y'all, Christmas is an external thing. Externally, I mean, it don't exist unless your hands start doing shit to bring forth this play, this background, this backdrop with trees, lights, cameras, action but if everybody sat still the whole month of december that day wouldn't manifest itself this is iterated in the scripts in jeremiah 10 right it's like be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathens are for the customs of the people are vain for one you cut a tree out of the forest it's the work of the axman with the axe he decorated with silver and gold you know what i'm saying it's saying this person is manifesting that so what people miss in the scriptures about your hands on your destiny. And and the blackity blacks always want to talk that shit about the black man is God. We the true and living first, true indeed. They weirdos for that. Because now they claiming something that Allah didn't say. He created man. Once again, once people had their, their perception of their group, it's, it's cultural. It's not universal the creator is one monotheism you can call yourself whatever you're trying to call yourself to get out of that one and that's all it is it's a deflection from accountability because oh we don't do that but we sacrifice there's no law for sacrifice no matter who you are y'all came together under the pagan holiday of mother's day because emotionally y'all love y'all mom right the Romans, the powers that be, have been using that technique because emotions always feel better than accountability. You don't want to say, I know I got AIDS because I was out of order with God. Well, I had to say about the stomach cancer, 
And I don't care if people understand it or not, but I know I lived a cancerous life. I know me. And it was a blessing to get that shit. And it opened my eyes up and I'm not closing them anymore because I do understand. Anybody in this world that ain't get put on your ass, it's impossible for your brain to move at the speed it need to move to see this shit. I'm out every day is a reset or is that stuff don't stick to me. It's no marriage to this world for me. I can bully it by the, the term that y'all have to deal with this shit. You can't push it off you fast enough. You know, it can't, it has no way to sit on me. And when it comes, I can leave it there. The jazz festival, I can leave that shit. They don't have to engage in shit. I know it was nothing that I got from that. They wasn't going to pay me for showing up. They didn't deserve what I had. So I came home and we went to eat and it was a beautiful day, but I could have stayed there. And then another event happened at McDonald's, this young girl, Alhamdulillah for Zoe. Um, we used the kiosk, we rung some food up and the receipt never came. And it was a young girl at the counter and we asked her politely because she check out, well, well, Munch is a woman, so I love Munch. Munch is, is the accountant. If something not right, she wanted. So Munch went immediately to the bank account, pulled up the receipt that we had just came up. So it's time stamp. But the girl was there like she didn't fucking speak English. A young black girl. I'm like, can you, did you see this? She was like, no. I don't know. It's like, can you look in the machine and see if the order is in there? And whatever the disconnect was, it was there. So it's like, you have a manager. And then she pointed, who was a Latino guy. He came right over, pulled it up, asked which kiosk it was, pulled the ticket out, said thanks. And that was it. And who, not who I am, but in that minute, I wanted to say a lot of stuff to her about being up front in the public and not being able to really serve the public and, and let her little ass have it. But I thought about Zoe, my check mechanism, like this is somebody's little girl and she ignorant because her parents are ignorant. You know, like Zoe is personable, like she, she could have, and I'm thinking about my daughter in that situation. Y'all know what I mean? So I'm not bragging about my kids, I'm telling about actuality. I, I can't not say because some people in their insecurity with their relationships with their kids will say, well, you don't know how your kids will respond. Yeah, I do. And who the fuck are y'all that just push the world? And this is my advantage that y'all don't have. Some of y'all not the assholes that I am. And a lot of people may, and it's not a contest and knowing what I know, but walking it out, too, that's a part of it. You don't get one part of it with me. It's the totality, because that's what I charge myself with, all of it. And shout out to my sister T, again, for charging herself. And I appreciate you, sis, as much as you appreciate me. You know, Jarrell, OGP, Dr. Chu, all of y'all. Help me. Cause y'all not just y'all y'all invested. You invested your time, right? That's the most valuable thing you have that you can give. Money, if people had an abundance of it, it should be easy to give away. You know, it's nothing invest it's nothing endearing about money. There's no feeling. You know what I'm saying? Your time is is something that you choose to, to share. So I always thank y'all for y'all time. And I don't think it'll ever be a point where I'll be monetized or interested in that situation because it will corrupt. It, it'll, it'll cause you to think of another way to get more of it, you know? It'll be like, well, I could do this. It's just the way it is. I don't care who you are as a person. Like, I want to do one more rep. And 
that's not a bad thing for health, but that's the personality. You know, when you realize that, you got to master that. You got to master you. It's not somebody's job not to offer me whatever it is. I have an order to follow no matter what life throw at me. So when I say I practice Torah, that's what I do. And and now I'm on attack mode more so than just absorbing. Most people absorb so much, even knowing it don't make a difference, you still absorbing. Y'all don't push the weight of the day off yourselves. Y'all have marriages to problems, jobs, and you revere that more than you revere the good. And that's a cloud. It's a curse. It's an incantation. It's an open acceptance of a house that's already furnished. Furnish your house and let people know you have the right. The jurisdiction in your house is yours, right? You can't push your house out on society. I keep Torah. I'm Islamic. I don't have a mufti, a, a rabbi. I don't. And they're not going to force it on me because they don't know how. When I challenge, when I challenge for my right to exist, everybody going to fall. And you know, as a man, you don't have a right to exist over anybody else. That's your God-given right. It ain't that you are a, a superman and you don't take no shit. Innately in you, nobody should be controlling you. You should be controlling yourself. It shouldn't be a man saying whether you can carry a gun or not. The control in you that you're supposed to keep from the order of our creator Anybody should be able to walk past you with a firearm or whatever, and you shouldn't think a suspect, that man ain't gonna kill me because he got a firearm. That's you believing in the evil that the creator made, but not the good. You, you can't live your life believing in the evil and think good gonna be in society. And then you don't even have to believe. It's not a belief system, so when people talk, belief, faith, and shit like that. I'm like, how about just obedience? And then see what happens. Don't get emotional. Don't believe shit. Just carry out the order and see what happens. That's like, and I can I can make it childlike as much as I need to, but that's what adults need. They need a childlike explanation. And I can use it with my physical body because you can see me. I don't believe that 10 pull-ups, 10 push-ups, and 10 dips will change my body. I don't believe this shit. There's no way I believe that because I don't have to. I can actually put it to the test. So I do 10 pull-ups, 10 push-ups, and 10 dips every goddamn day. Do you believe that or can you see my body at work? So when y'all challenge about God, I'm like, it ain't no challenge. You haven't done anything. You don't qualify to say it don't work. So when I talk about people qualifying and I'm talking about verses, I'm like, dog, you under the state. You know what I'm saying? Like, you under the Christianity that conquered this shit. Stand in Islam. Stand in being self-lord and master and being ruled only by the law of God. Then your taxes disappear. Then your driver's license and you asking another creature like yourself for permission to move about income. Can you build something? All these permits that some man said under the name of his king, queen, whatever that you got to check it out with him if you can earn a living. And when you earn a living, you got to give this man a percentage of your living and he can call it Medicare, unemployment, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And, and how did that happen? You agreed in it and didn't know you agreed in the form of a W-4, Social Security. It's, it's coercion. It's not full disclosure. And it voids anything that you sign. This is actual law, not policy. It's only one law on the land. That's the law of God. In everybody's house and home, you can operate the policy that you want. But you don't operate your household policy on the general public. So while MVA, a DMV, and the police department, they have their individual policies, they don't force their policies on the public. Public, you and I, it's an infraction when we deal with each other, lose life, limb, or we get damaged person to person because law only exists because we exist. 
businesses don't exist without any blood and IRS, FBI, CIA, these initials. When y'all say the Bible was written by man, y'all don't get it. No, those policies and those organizations were definitely written by man with those men and those organizations best interest in mind. Your God, our creator, has mankind's best interest in mind. So it's your best bet to stand under the order of God, not the policy of YouTube, IG. It's just a belief system. I have every right God gave me. I don't give them up to come to a public platform, which is YouTube. A stage, a wooden stage built by YouTube. And YouTube isn't responsible for anything I say. You're not going to sue YouTube for anything that Evan the Cheat Code says. I'm responsible as a man created by God for everything I say. YouTube won't serve one day in jail if I threaten somebody on YouTube. YouTube will not get taken down if I threaten somebody on YouTube. YouTube will not get sued if I anything on YouTube. I reserve and keep all those rights. I am accountable. I self-lord and master me under the word of God, not under the policies of YouTube. People just don't believe. That's why I don't operate under the belief system. When I stopped having a driver's license, this is because I knew what driving was. Driving by law. This is not fucking algebra or trigonometry. You can look this up. And for the people that know, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm glad you know. Do it. You're not in a competition with me, dumbass. That's your money. That's your taxes, that's your renewal driver's fees, that's your emissions test. All these ta dollar grabs that has nothing to do with me and you, you and I committing a crime against each other. You can't commit a crime against God in the air. You, is God taxing you because of smog? Like, do you honestly think that mankind can destroy this air? It's birds that need this oxygen, trees, everything. You think man can honestly do something to this climate? Do you believe some shit like that? Have you seen a tsunami, a hurricane, earthquake, um, stuff like that? That happens, and they can track where it is. And what, Have they ever been able to build anything to stop it? People say that man can control the weather. Get the Look, that's more boogeyman shit. If he could control the weather, it would be something to control how hard that a storm would hit, not create a storm. He would create the fear. You got to live behind a such and such proof wall or your house got to be a certain amount of center block. They would control it financially that way to where your building structure would have to be super reinforced. They wouldn't scare you like we can control the weather. They, they don't want to tell you that. If mankind ever came out his mouth, the powers that be, and alluded to they could control the weather, the creator would crush this planet. I, I don't have a belief system. There's no need to believe. I know what the order of our creator is, and for a man to play the role, it's not good for man. Um, tall, transgender, sex sex change people, you're not going to have a good life. Whether I wish you were a good life or not, you chose something outside of divinity. And by divinity, I mean um, a tree. I can't show y'all now. The tree out here is just never going to be grass. It could get cut out. You could put a leaf in the ground and have a green leaf growing next to the grass, but it's going to be a leaf. You know, a leaf and never aspire to be grass, and that's divinity. A dog won't be a cat. Cat won't be a rat. Rat won't be a mouse, and so forth. And they don't seem to have a problem with it, or a fly identifying as a bumblebee. And I'm not being funny again. I'm just saying people being the highest form, the most intelligent form, that have a free will 
or created with a way to choose the good, the bad, the, the evil, the light, the dark. You the only animal or creature that can choose to be outside of what you was created to be. You choose to have a sex change. You know, animals go in the heat. It's not a homosexual heat. It's a heat to reproduce. They not out there fucking for porn purposes. It's about reproducing. We make movies with just sex involved. The creator made sex with recreation involved. Like, oh, reproduction, I'm sorry. Bad term. We don't go into heat like animals do. At any given time, you, you can get one rocked off. So... You you have the ultimate authority on the planet. Any perversion, any disease, any any oddity to happen, it's at the hands of man stepping outside the order of your creator. You know, the invisible God that don't exist, that people don't believe in. And you see murder. You see homosexuality, theft, sex trafficking. And you could have chose something else, but when, when the people that's doing that shit chose it, it's like, well, they don't believe in God either. It ain't no mild. It's like your society reflect on that. And because you think your, your offense to the creator, be it your dietary law, your idolatry, um, graven image worship, be it a crucifix, a rock, whatever, you know, the monument, the statue worships and whatever it is, it's outside the line of Allah. But you are less than yours because, well, I ain't murdering anybody. I ain't raping. And those people are, I think, more honest about, you know, their being on the outside of what God would instruct them to be. They don't hide behind they not murdering and then eating pork or they not murdering and celebrating one of the feast days of men. Whatever it is, Christmas or birthday, Easter, you name it. One of y'all days where y'all came up with it. Mm. So, yeah, um, if they can get you to believe, you know, believe. And there's really no need for you to believe in anything if you think about it. A belief system is not equitable for anybody. When you say something, you should be able to prove it beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt. Otherwise, it's got to get thrown out. And this, I'm speaking about law. And law all start with me and it start with you. When you get somebody else to speak on behalf of you, for you, then you at the mercy of them. Or you get somebody to attorn for you, the attorney to, to interpret policies, when all you need to know is the word of God and question on that. Well, let me get this straight. Where did God say for this society that you had to pay taxes? I like to keep it simple because it's really that simple. You know, once they start compounding words, now they dealing in a language that, that suit a policy. Law will put policy on its ass all the time because law is about accountability. Do you or do you not have this right or that right over the person? Because this person did this. Is it an actual crime? This guy was going this fast. I'm pressing charges against him. Has anybody ever, any citizens ever pressed charges against each other because they saw a guy going 70? And you can call, hey, officers, the guy going 70 miles an hour in a 60-mile zone. I like to press charges. Just think about that. And this is my specialty. Like, this is where... Your intelligence going to come in. Your ability to be able to just get to the point, the base of it, what law is, what it's for. Is it to generate money or to protect people, the public? And when you create a law, you got to know for a fact, going 60 miles an hour in the 50 mile power zone, 35 people are going to die every day. If that doesn't happen, it's a bad policy. You should not restrict people's ability to move about and be free with fear. And y'all have these pre already furnished homes. And when you see a guy like me, 
taking that furniture, throwing it the fuck out the house, saying you don't have to have that furniture. People standing back scared, waiting to see if they come and take me away so they can say, see, I knew that nigga was going to get locked up. I knew this was going to happen. That's why I ain't throw my furniture out. Yeah, I get it. Y'all some bitches. Y'all some bitches, but it ain't going to happen because the word of the creator is, is sound. And as long as I stand under that, none of y'all can say shit about it. You cannot like me because I say shit, fuck, bitch. And that's cool, but if you had to take me to court, or take me to the court, which is God, take me to God and condemn me on the words that Allah, whatever you want to call out, one God, true monotheistic creator, say about language. And don't give a fuck about y'all feelings because you don't like the word fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. Fuckity fuck, fuck, the fuck, fuck, fuck. I don't eat pork. I don't celebrate Christmas. I don't eat shellfish. And you fucking worried about the fucking word fuck. You the hypocrite fucker. Ignore fuck or ignore me. But don't try to make it against God, you fucking fucker. That I like to say the word fuck. And, and somebody got to do this kind of work. To shut you fake fucks the fuck up. We gonna focus on what the fuck God said. Not what the fuck you fucking talking about. Motherfucker. Now. Some people are gonna be offended by the word fuck. Some of you people. Right? You think it matter if you f offended by the word fuck? Did, did I tell y'all what I was offended by? Nobody give a fuck about what I'm offended by. I'm keeping the word of the creator. You should too. That will help you in turning away or going home or getting out the way of something that could take energy from you. Like, if I'm fucking with you like that, motherfucker, why the fuck would you stay around and fucking be angry? That's your self-mastery. Shout out to Tommy Sotomayor who got his channel taken down. Because Tommy was expressing himself on the YouTube platform. And Tommy made quite a bit of money on the YouTube platform. So Tommy was in agreement with YouTube anyway. You know, he had to say certain stuff and he would abide by certain guidelines or he wouldn't get paid. He understood that. They understood that too. Tommy could still be on, but under that monetary system, he wouldn't make the money that he made. So, and I think that was his livelihood. Now it's gone all together. And I don't feel sorry for Tom because for the longest time, and I liked, I liked Sotomayor, but for the longest time, you can't keep abiding by these people's laws and then complain that they taking your channel down. You know, my shit is not monetized. I came here for free speech, not to make money. So I'm going to continue my free speech and reserve all rights and YouTube is all you have to do is say you reserve all rights right before you broadcast. Like, I reserve all rights. Put it in the title. All my rights. Free speech protected. People don't have to like your content. Your content can be offensive. They just don't have to check in. It, it, are they glued to the seat? So YouTube won't give up any of my fucking rights. I know I'm only going to have a couple of views. I'm not here in that capacity. I don't need the masses to come in. Sister Tina hit me up. I met Tina online. T sister, uh, she like a sister to me. She in my life now. Um, a lot of people, and they might not necessarily had the view that I had or even agree with some of the stuff I was saying when I first started saying it. But they had the wherewithal to go check it out, to look into it. These people became my family for their ability to do the same shit that I did. When I came across something, some information, I jumped into it. You know, I had a certain aspect, a certain outlook in life, certain shit. House that was already furnished. I, I was born into one of those. But I was telling y'all the whole time while I was gutting it out. Shit, some of y'all was here helping me gut it out. Still here. It's easy now. I can't look back. It's, it's nothing. It's nobody. Shout out to Bert again. It was, it was a pleasure talking to him. And even still being that close to it, he get it. 
Shout out to Bert. But I also realized that I could never, the whole vibe, you know, talked about skating. Skating is dope. If I could go to a skate rink somewhere, it was nobody there and just get my skate on. That would be so dope, you know, like, good music though. That's another thing, to have good music. I don't care who would be in the skate rink. I could be in there by myself if, if I had one of those Burt tracks spinning. Just skate music. Yeah, but it's nice out today, y'all. Again, I'm outside, out back. I can't flip the camera around because I'm uploading this video. This is one that I'm pre-recording. And no, nobody missed the live stream. Pre-recorded. Just wanted to come in and talk about reserving rights and what actual rights were because you policies don't take or give what God gave to you. You either lose that in your agreements, willful agreements, where you actually been told the terms of anything you signed or put your name on applications, contracts, it's a job contract. They sliding W-4s inside that and making you think that it's pre-furnished. You do not have to give any information financially to the government. It's none of their business how much you make. They telling you you have to make a certain amount of dollars. Like your government has already said you can only make a certain amount of money. And when you have money, we have to know about it. And that's totally a lie. On a law, no man has a right to know about any other man's income. It doesn't matter that these men built this organization for themselves and deemed themselves IRS. I know it seems like Magnus and Monumental and you up against it, but you're not. It don't matter how many men or women work in the IRS. All of them had the same answer. If you ask that particular man or woman, how much money you owe them and why you owe that money to them. Nobody in the IRS could explain that to you. So you don't owe that building anything. And they'll bully you, threaten you with jail, all this shit because you want to keep the money that you got up at four in the morning, the wind in the summer, went out and earned. Y'all understand it? It's that simple. You don't have a person standing up on your behalf saying that because they're in on it. Your congressman, councilman, mayor, all of it's about business. Under a law, why would you wanna do that to somebody else? If you don't wanna be a part of, of the under, don't, don't try to be over. Like the equity and the creator is for every man. And some people are gonna be taller than others. Some people are gonna be shorter, bigger, but it's not your job to say, look at me, I'm tall, I'm taller. The equity is based on me being taller or the world is based on me being broader. Like, no, nah, it's not. You you and your insecurity or your greed can't put another man under you or in a position of where he's got to be dominated by you. That's what religion did. The world was colonized and dominated by religion. One religion in, in its entirety, which is Christianity. And I'm going to play this, and then I'm going to get out of here, y'all. I'm at an hour and eight minutes in, which was nice and cool. Didn't lose track of what I was trying to say. Let me end it like where, where your rights get lost at, where your rights come and go at, and... Here we go. This is really important for our culture to understand where Christianity came from. And this is direct evidence. You can actually walk this path and come to this conclusion. You can know that Christianity was an invention of the Romans. It was done to pacify their subjects. And this is important because it gives us a different way of understanding government, how government operates, the tools that government uses, the purpose that government has for the various propaganda apparatus. I think it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a requirement of alert citizens to know how the Gospels were written, why they were written, who produced them, what was the purpose and back of all this. This is good citizenry.
Everyone should be involved in this. Everyone should be looking at this, reading it, and coming and, and recognizing that this was where the Gospels originated. The Gospels came from the Flavian Imperial Court. That's where it started at, the colonization, y'all. Step out from under the Christianity. Claim yourself as your own self, Lord and Master. Answer to only the morality of God and man can't be in your way. He can't tell you the only laws and rules that you can abide by are the laws of God. The Pledge of Allegiance is one nation under God. Not a karma book, not a universal law book, a science book, history, math. What you swearing is your divinity and the court of law. It's enough. With your taxes, it's enough. Driver's license, it's enough. All your rights, music, you reserve your God-given rights to express yourself through music. You reserve your God-given rights to bring forth information, to be the press. YouTube doesn't get the right to say, no, you can't say that because you might offend. I might offend with the way I smell. I can't go to jail for that. YouTube, you understand that? You are the taker of people rights in the name of what humanity and fairness well how is that humane and fair to the person that don't want to like black people that don't want to like gays that don't want to like jews you're not a law you don't get to say that that person don't have a voice because i want them to like and do what i want them to like and do that's slavery no matter how you try to put it what you tried to hide behind a gun law, uh, you'll get killed if they have guns. You taking away people's rights, God-given rights to protect themselves. Keep and bear arms. There's no policy that can take that away no matter what kind of fear tactic. People getting shot, they are. And the reason people getting shot and murdered is because your parents or whoever not teaching you to respect, thou shall not murder. Whether you like this motherfucker or not, don't murder. Whether he said some words about you or not that you didn't like, that didn't touch you, don't murder. If a man comes at you with intent to harm, it's still not murder if that man died in the confrontation. That's what killing is. Murder is no reason. It's no threat. And you go out in a robbery, you kill somebody. You, you're in an argument with somebody and you kill, murder them. Murder them is... No beef, no nothing. It's not a mutual combat agreement. If it's not a mutual conflict, a 